It's July the 26th, 2014. You are watching the nuclearproctologist.org and we tonight are covering an unusual one, directed energy weapons and nuclear tactical nuclear weapons. So I'm sure everybody wants to hear about the directed energy weapons and probably don't care about the rest of it. I can assure you I got an incredible show tonight but I'm not going to hold you up. We'll get busy very quick. Let's make, make sure the stream is live and running. That beautiful girl boy, Dana. And we stream here most nights at around 8 p.m. We're back on track the last week, finally, with new software and new equipment. Hi, Franz Wazel. MSVS, John's Townsend, Sean Can't Surf. I think Kate was in there. You'll find Kate at the Fukushima Hound site. I never got the links in the night for the hounds because this is about Israel, but you never know. Robert, Adam, MSVS, looks like I got the stream. Let's get busy. Let me double check the audio. Stream is live. Looks good enough to me. Sounds good. Past uh, Slippery Pixels and David Maurer, Laura. Let me jump right into it, and I'll come back over after. So first off, I, I have to cover that right away just because that's such a an incredible thing we have happening here. Here, I'll bring it over to smooth. My mistake. Hang on a second. Okay. So you see that one there? Now look at the way the detonation is. And I want you to remember... I want you to remember that uh, directed energy weapons, China has them, Russia has them, America has them, so you shouldn't really be surprised that Israel has them, obviously. Now I'm going to show you a comparison of the detonations, what they say, one is a bomb, both are bombs. So here's the two bombs, and you can see the one behind me, that's a typical detonation we see on TV all over the place. This one over here, I have never seen before. I can't find another picture like it, and I certainly done my homework before I got here tonight. So here's some more examples. You can see the detonation, the detonation above me is not a detonation. That's a, look how thin it is, look how bright it is, look at the difference. It doesn't have smoke, it doesn't have debris, it's not tossing stuff everywhere. Now I used to work cutting torch with a cutting torch. Uh, two and three hundred feet under the ocean all the time and I would chop off huge chunks of metal and I was able to make that you know those arcs I distinctly remember it. the minute I seen that I knew what it was it wasn't a welder that's for sure but it was something because uh, lasers for instance which is another form of directed energy weapons have been used for welding for a very long time 50 years lasers celebrated their 50th year anniversary but when you look at the detonation alongside of me and then the one above me they got nothing in common one got smoke got debris big big uh, you know cloud the other one is an intense energy beam that's a directed energy weapons folks and the one up in the corner you can see is it a typical one and the one to the, my over to the other side that was a couple of days ago these are typical explosions these are what we see in our entire life the one over my head I've never seen before the one over my head disperses out like hot lava like when you're hitting when you're cutting six inches of steel with a cutting torch and you can throw lava right and it and has the, it does the exact same thing truly they are using directed energy weapons and here's another mix and mash I put together for you the one over my head is a typical explosion. The one right here is a typical explosion. The one over there is a typical explosion. The one here, we got no idea what that is. That's amazing. That's stunning. Let's go over and look at a big picture of it again. And a bigger picture of it, rather. So you can really see it there. Now you got to realize Gaza let me go back to those detonations again for a second before I get on with the show here tonight. Those detonations, um, you know, they're coming out of tanks, right? 
that's what they're firing at the tanks. That's the 155 millimeter rounds that's coming out of tanks. And so these are directed uh, depleted uranium rounds. And they're 10 pounds uranium 238. And they're not tipped, they're not coated, they're contaminated with plutonium. 239, 240, they're contaminated with americium 241, they're contaminated with all the radioactive elements from a chain reaction. And it's important that we get that started here tonight and so that you can really you can really get a handle on what's going on. So when they fire these cannons, these 155 millimeter rounds, they, they create a crater around 900 feet. Um, and we got so much here, so you're going to have to bear with me because there's an amazing amount of work that I got put in here tonight. And I'll get all back and synced up to where I'm supposed to be starting the show. Let's go over there. Uh -huh. And so the, we'll come back to directed energy weapons one more time for a second. And because there's a couple of really interesting points to make, you know. That you don't see the debris, you're not seeing the chunks, you're not seeing the smoke, you don't see the smoke trail from, right? And and weapons don't power themselves down all the way down into the planet. And if they did, it has an engine, it has to leave a vapor. And when it hits the ground, it, it leaves debris everywhere. It throws, you know, up a hundred foot of topsoil and creates these huge craters, right? And so the one over my head is missing that. We've never seen that before. Now, you know, we've, uh, well, I've never seen it, and I've been at this a long time. So that's a directed energy weapon. Now, that doesn't mean it's a single laser, even though it certainly looks like a deer, don't it? Uh, there could be other factors on the go there with the way they do it. There could be other, uh, like another beam, another spectrum you can't even see coming from a different direction. So they could be hitting the target with different beams. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying you have to take in consideration they can use two and three different types of... Uh, of directed energy weapons at the one time but this looks like it's coming from it could be coming from a satellite or it's coming from way up anyway and that is very um, that is very frightening that is absolutely unimaginable frightening that they're using directed energy weapons against people that are throwing rocks like the Hamas every rocket that Hamas and I'm not saying Hamas is good but every rocket that Hamas ever fired doesn't add up to a single one to that one of those bombs you see here can't is more damaged than every rocket that Hamas has ever fired a single bomb that Israel fires at these people look at this this was a huge inconceivable unimaginable size of an explosion disproportionate disproportionate here's what a Hamas rocket done look it took out the windows of a car it took out the windows of a car and so israel said you know what we're just going to blow up uh chunks as big as communities at a time and that's what they done look at how much the upheaval is of this stuff and i'm doing a bit of clicking around because i got so much here and so it's a it's a busy show here tonight that's for sure and because i got so much We'll get started back to where I was. And I got quite a lot of video clips for everybody tonight. And we left off, the last time I talked about, my last video about Israel, I left off on the white phosphorus. So Israel made, during cast lead, 200,000 phone calls and told people to get out of their homes and text messages. When they ran outdoors, they dropped the 900, I'm sorry, the 155 millimeter depleted uranium round uh, down in that neighborhood. Now, people had nowhere to go. Then they dropped white phosphorus in on top of that. So people that were wounded and lying dead and helpless and injured then had to contend with a snowstorm of white phosphorus. And so you talk about insanity and disproportionate. This time around, they're hammering away with these 155 millimeter rounds. These are depleted uranium rounds. These are dirty bombs. These are dirty bombs, and when these dirty bombs go off, you can see they contaminate the entire area. Now, these elements in these bombs, uranium-238, these elements have went through a chain reaction that doesn't exist. Uh, these elements don't exist in our universe. 
that we know about. They don't exist on the periodic table. We inserted them. They're not created by the sun, and you won't find them on the moon. And so they're man-made elements, and they're, they're the most carcinogenic man-made elements on the planet. And just a dial back at the uh, Israeli soldiers celebrating cooking Gazans, who only throw rocks, who literally only throw rocks. And Israel is, oh yeah, it's cool, it's radical, it's okay to use 4,000 tanks, to fighter jets, to Black Hawk helicopters, to deplete uranium dirty bombs against people that don't have an army. Now Hamas, and I'll cover that later in a little bit, we want to get to the video. Here's a short video clip so you can really understand what a bomb actually means. So I played that twice. Um, now we got some really hard stuff coming up here. It's it's hardcore, so we better get going. Now they don't. They, there's no such thing as peace talks, and by the end of the show, I think everybody will have a handle on what's really going on here. Besides the directed energy weapons, which is weapon testing, right? It's like the tunnel testing, and so they were they were putting this uh, holly volatile gas down in the tunnels and so the tunnels can never be used again on top of that so it's a chemical warfare directed energy warfare dirty bomb warfare and then tactical nukes uh, which is what you've seen just now in that big explosion and I just wanted to catch that oh I missed it too late so the audio was good on that when you guys got the detonations because we know we had problems last night for some reason and let's go with the next one here we go and make sure I got my audio. I'll be stopping this one and correcting them guys, hopefully. We'll see. Well, let's speak now to Danny Yatam. He's a former head of Mossad and joins us now from Modi'in, which lies northwest of Jerusalem near the West Bank. Danny Yatam, um, some 940 Palestinians have died since this conflict began. Uh, 185 children, 93 women. When is this going to end? I hope that it is going to end as soon as possible and we regret and I myself regret each and every of an innocent Palestinian or an innocent uh, Israeli that uh, was killed but we have to understand the consensus is due to the fact that Israeli population is suffering during the last 14 years from shellings of rockets and... Uh, so how many tasks. Israelis have died in the last 14 years then? Well, uh, you know, we have very good defensive uh, systems and we don't uh, need many Israelis to die in order to be uh, on the right place. Meaning, we retaliated. I just want to, men to, to uh, mention again that uh, well, Hamas was uh, the one that initiated uh, this round. We uh, deliberately did not fire back. We showed a lot of restraint. Twice we agreed to a truce. Twice Hamas uh, uh, dis uh, did not agree to a truce. So uh, you have to ask those uh, questions first and foremost. Well, let's speak now to Danny Yatta. So Hamas didn't agree to the truce, is what he's saying. And so they're going to level every neighborhood I think it's eastern Gaza. And Gaza is just a little tiny spit of land. That's all they got left. They got nothing left. You can see coming up here, 4.7 million people are classified as refugees. And so you don't suppose that's got something to do with all of this because they want their land back. And if you look at this one here, Gaza is right up by the eye in Israel, that little green tiny strip, that's all he got left. Look at the last one over, that's what it was originally. And so they got nothing left. They got 25 miles by four square miles left. 25 miles by four square miles. It's not very much. Uh, let me hang on a second, because we got a lot to cover. So the next clip is about, uh -huh. And I forgot to check. Here we go. Some 30 
people have been killed by tank shelling in the northern part of the Gaza Strip on this UNRWA school and that it could be 100 or more than 100 people injured. Now, we know that there are hundreds of people who have gone to these United Nations schools to try and get some kind of protection from the bombardment. Uh, people have left the eastern flank of the Gaza Strip as well as the north, and they've moved to around 70 different schools. The reports are that some 30... So, Israel is saying to us, to, um, how would you put it, uh, yeah, human shields. Right? And we're going to cover that coming up here very quick. We got another video coming up. Now, this is what a 900, just to, so you can understand what a 900 millim, uh, 155 millimeter depleted uranium round from those tanks actually does. You're looking at it. Now, consider that you're in cast lead. Israel fired uh, 25,000 emitted of these. These are all dirty bombs. Now, if you were to take each one to line it up 900 foot wide times 25,000, you get 4,200 miles. 4,200 miles. 22,000 feet. 4,200 miles of craters. Against people with no army, no tanks, no jets, no bomb shelters, no nothing. And 5 million refugees living in refugee camps outside. And they're in a 25 mile by 4 mile, and they're being bombed from the ocean. They have land, sea, and air embargoes. Here comes another clip. <coughs> now, this was the Washington, um, it was a think tank. What the hell is the name of it? Now, he's going to say what Mark Reggae used to say all the time. And, and then second and finally, electricity. Uh, the um, the Israelis still providing electricity to Gaza, and if so, why does that not enter into the calculation? And is there any other conflict in history where you continue to provide electricity to, an, uh, to your attacker? Yeah, electricity is being provided intermittently right now because <clears throat> periodically the power grid gets you know disrupted. In some case, yeah. or hits. Right. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try to answer that as briefly as I can. It's a very complicated subject. It's not just electricity, it's also water. It's also the fact that even while this war goes on, over 100 trucks a day are allowed by Israel to cross into Gaza with humanity. 100 trucks a day goes into Gaza, 1.6 million people. 16,000 people per truck, not even enough to supply toilet paper, not enough to supply diapers, 100 trucks, is nothing. We're in 25,000 people, we go through that every day, three supermarkets and all the other shops. Uh, so 100 trucks is not going to supply nothing to nobody. Just let him finish off with his thought there. He got that from Mark Reggae regurgitating it for a couple of years straight, right? Supplies. And it's not a siege. There is no siege. There is no blockade. It's just a controlled, limited flow of goods through the Israeli border and not through the Egyptian border. So if there is any blockade of Gaza, it's the Egyptian blockade of Gaza, not the Israeli blockade of Gaza. And then so the 600 checkpoints got nothing to do with blockade, is what you're saying? And that the fact that Israel is the fourth biggest weapons producer on the planet, and they're using directed energy weapons. Um, let me go down and show you that again for anybody that's joining us, because we can keep popping back and forth. Just in case you missed the first part, it'll be a while before you can watch it. The, the video alongside me is a bomb. Another one alongside me is a bomb. One up the corner is a bomb. What the hell is that thing above my head? No smoke, no trails. You don't have any debris flying all over the place. You have this serious bright light. Looks like you're being hit with a welder's torch. That's a directed energy weapon, folks. You don't need to be a genius to work that one out, okay? Let me keep going on everything we got here because we got a long way to go yet before we get all this. Okay, now the Washington Institute came out with a whole bunch of videos, short videos. Now, I had just watched that whole presentation and uh, that's one of the clips you just watched. 
So another interest, you'll get a laugh out of this one. Now, Israel has a few habits, and he stopped doing one of their habits since the war. Wait till you get a load of this. Here we go. So I was asked to speak very briefly about Israeli political calculations and public opinion in this situation. And I will say, uh, I will make just three quick points here before I turn the podium over to my distinguished colleagues. First, there are no polls in Israel about uh, what's, what's going on, as far as I know. And that in itself is very interesting and unusual uh, phenomenon. People are too preoccupied, uh, too uh, understandably so, to take polls or to pay much attention to public opinion polls. And so even though most of the time there are polls in Israel several times a week, in the last three weeks, I don't think there's been a single one. So no polls in Israel on the war. Have we killed enough? Not even that one. Are you going to keep paying your taxes? Of course you are. Now there's a lot of people in Israel protesting. Just an amazing amount of people protesting. We've got a lot more to get through here tonight. Just make sure. Here's a good one. <laughs> uh -huh. Make sure I got everything in order. Okay, here's another one. From the Washington Institute, I mean the crazies. Anyway, here we go. Is it possible that the Israelis may begin to have some uh, issues about munitions, either uh, Iron Dome munitions or offensive munitions? And you know, do they manufacture? I mean, some of that come from the U.S. Is it possible that the Israelis? So to worry about, I mean, that's ridiculous. It's the most absurd thing ever. And what happens? is not all the rockets are going to come close to Israel cities or communities. Certainly just a tiny half of a percent at best. And that's the ones they might shoot at. And they can afford to shoot a whole bunch of rockets to knock it down. But then they pad the numbers. And if this was a real army, if they were fighting a real army, they'd be massacred. They can't even go fight people that throws rocks and rockets without warheads. They'd be massacred. They went up against Iran. They'd be finished. It'd be down time for all of them. They couldn't last a minute. They can't go fight people with weapons they shoot back. All they can do is fight people with nothing. And people with bombs that can barely damage a car. That's what a rocket from Hamas will do. Right? That's an official one. Pop the window out. And if you go out and search on Google for Hamas rocket or rocket damage to Israel or rocket attack against Israel, you're not going to find a single picture. Nothing. There's not a picture out there of Israel getting hit by anything. How unusual is that? How, how messed up is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here we go again. we got a lot more to get through yet. And so... I clicked on that one. I think this one he's talking about... Oh, yeah. This is a over the top. But here you go. Total strikes, in the, again, in the first 10 days, over 2,000, probably up around 3,000 strikes uh, as of today, and are averaging you know, as many as 200 strikes a day uh, in, into, uh, into Gaza. And it's useful to think about the amount of strike activity relative to the same to the uh, claimed uh, civilian casualties, right? Uh, by the calculation... I um, let me come back to that one one more time. I smurfed up, I guess. I jumped on it. So much to get through. We'll keep going. Here we go. It takes about six to seven airstrikes to kill uh, one, you know, Palestinian, right? And about 1.4 airstrikes to kill or to injure one, pal you know, civilian or Palestinian. Civilian or, or Palestinian. Okay. We're getting to the nitty gritties now, to the good stuffs. So 1.4 strikes to injured. There's over 5,000 injured. And over 1,000 bodies they got back. There's probably another 1,000 buried on an honor all the rubble. And there's a massive, inconceivable, unimaginable amount of rubble. Okay? Just like, it's over the top stuff. So we got a couple more clips from them guys. Then we're getting the Benny, Gingerman, Gingerman, Nat, and Yahoo. And uh, was the iron dome? The iron dome. Here's a little perp on the iron dome. In addition to the, in addition to the, the rocket fire, every day there's a lot of mortar fire 
uh, right along the border that goes into Israeli settlements and so on, but also a, a lot of that goes against Israeli uh, ground force installations along the border with Gaza. Uh, rockets versus Iron Dome. Uh, this has got a, you know, a huge amount of attention, uh, I think, in the media. It's one of the things the media has really, uh, you know, grappled on onto. Uh, but it's, it's useful to remember in, in thinking about Iron Dome and how it works and all that is that it only attempts to intercept rockets that are determined to be a threat. So not every rocket that comes out of Gaza is going to be, in, you know, intent, there's going to be an attempted uh, interception by, by the Iron Dome system. Uh, at the beginning of this conflict, the Israelis uh, appear to have had seven Iron Dome batteries in operation. Uh, most of those were in the south. Uh, by, the, by this time, they now have 10, ba 10 Iron Dome batteries in operation. They rushed three, three more into uh, service during the, uh, during the course of the conflict, a uh, pretty significant uh, accomplishment. Uh, in the first 10 days... So they got three more uh, Iron Dome batteries up. It's a lot of money. Now, this next clip coming up, it's uh, in, over to your left, you're going to see... Oh, we got that. Make sure my audio is on that. Okay. So the next clip, you're going to see what's really going on in that neighborhood. These people are hiding because they hear of a rocket attack, right? So this is just military people jumping out of their cars playing the game. They're not worried about hitting by a rock, a rocket. It can barely damage your car like I've been showing you. But here's what they do every day to the children in the Palestine in their neighborhoods. And they harassed him to get in their faces. And it, like you get no peace. The also orthodoxic gang up on it. The military will come in and arrest him if they fight back. And every day they have to struggle to get out their door. Every day they have to struggle to walk down the street. You can see the soldier coming. He ain't going to do jack shit. He ain't going to arrest anybody. He ain't going to scold them. He, does, he just knows there's a camera in that area, so he got to give it up. Now he's going in and harassing him. Stay in your house. I'll shoot you. I didn't do nothing, the young fighter says. Shut up. And meanwhile, they're telling the whole world, Oh, we're driving down the road. Do you think you're any safer? Like, do you think... Hang on a second. Like, your terror that you're feeling right there is not the same as that kid's terror okay your terror is you're worried about your insurance got to pay for a back window your terror is not realistic these kids in this car they're truly terrorized they're terrified they're terrorized of the word Israeli and rightly so it has no conscience it has no soul to it it attacks people with no weapons it attacks people who can't fight back it attacks people with no helicopters, no jet fighters, no tanks, no artillery, just jack shit. People with no training, with no sophistication, no satellites, no drones, no chemical, biological, directed energy weapons like over my head. Oh, coming up over my head. But look at these bombs. Think about what we're talking about here. Compared to what? Compared to something that can break out a window. Compared to something that the middle one there, that's a directed energy weapon. The ones around it are kinetic bombs, right, with, with uh, explosives in it. But the one in the middle, that's a directed energy weapon. And you can see it doesn't throw out debris. This is absolutely stunning, folks. This is unbelievable, unimaginable, inconceivable that they're doing that against people with nothing. That people can't even fight back. And they hide away thousands or thousands of yards, uh, miles away. And you can see the depleted uranium round sitting on the ground. And you just stick it in the tank and fire it. They don't know. They don't, under, they don't even understand. They don't consider that these people are humans too. They don't consider that they got families, they got hopes and dreams, and that five million refugees, five million refugees, let me keep going, five million, five million, 
And not only that, look that corner over there, Gaza, little tiny strip. And the West Bank, settlers. That's all settlers. That's the maddest. And we got Mr. Man Rules. What are you people talking about? A dirty nuke bomb that will start World War III and we won't be talking online. We'll be dead. Then think, what will, will the wind blow? Do you know anything about what we're talking about? You should go hang out with kids or something because you have no concept of what we're talking about. You really don't. There you go, dirty bomb. So that whole area is contaminated with radiation. I'm not insulting you, man. I'm just saying you don't understand what's really going on here, obviously. No offense. Gaza has fallen victim to Israel's experimental wars. And they have, you know, six or seven hundred of these checkpoints. They know everybody's cell phone. They know everybody's number. And Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu has a long, long history. A long history. Here's Benny. Look, I'm 28 years old. I've had to defend my country in two wars and in many battles. Now, no one is denying that there are Palestinian Arabs. There is a very distinguished Palestinian Arab sitting right next to me. What should be done with the Palestinians on the West Bank? It's a problem, so what should be done about it, in your opinion? Well, I think that the Palestinians in the West Bank are going to be offered the full human rights, the full civil rights, as there are no Arabs are offered in the Middle East. No Arabs whatsoever have any full human rights or the right to vote for their own government. Those Arabs who lived in Israel in the pre-67 boundaries are the only Arabs in the Middle East who offer that right, and I'm all in favor of having the same Arabs. He's crazy. He's a madman. 28 years old. And he's still at it today with the same rhetoric, the same nonsense, the same song and dance, the same non-promise. Never, never, never. Think about these detonations. They kill animals like you wouldn't believe. And then they poison and they destroy. Like, every rocket that Hamas has couldn't do that. Every rocket that Hamas has combined, couldn't pull that off. That's Israel's tank rounds. And they're just popping away at it. Bang, 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 bang. Let's keep going. Here's another clip. A bit of says that over 70 rockets have been fired on Israeli settlements since the early hours of Wednesday. Israel says that two of the three rockets that were fired at the nuclear city of Dimona landed near its nuclear reactor, while only one was intercepted by the Iron Dome missile system. Barrage rockets has also hit Israel's Ragavim military base. Tel Aviv says that over 70 rockets have been fired on Israel's settlement. Oh, I see uh, Dalmar says, do you have, actually have some real proof such weapons are actually being used? Man, Russia and America is putting them on the Humvees and on their ships. What do you think this is, fantasy? Here's your evidence. You don't need to be a genius to look at the picture. Look at the bombs and look at the one in the middle. See it? It doesn't send out shrapnel. It's not sending out big plumes. It's not showing up a hundred square foot of earth. It's not showing up dead Palestinian children. It's molten lava in every direction. That's what a laser does. And this is a sophisticated directed energy weapon. Come on, man. Use your common sense. Here we go. We got more coming up. Now they're talking about the Mona nuclear power plant, which is Israelis secret of illegal nuclear power facility and where they have about 200 nuclear weapons uh, fissionable material produced and they have I think it's five nuclear subs totally maniacal here we go Hamas has target deliberately targeted Dimona nuclear reactor which is a textbook case of nuclear terrorism if they do succeed in striking the nuclear and it's outrageous I mean post Fukushima is just insane um, if post Fukushima post Fukushima Three melted reactors, 100% meltdowns. Each one of them, three times the size of Chernobyl. Each one of them, 100% Chernobyl, one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Fukushima also has Unit 4. Don't forget about the spent fuel pools. You don't even want me to get me started. Let's go back to that clip. That always irritates me that she used that. They do succeed in striking the nuclear reactor. Would this be crossing a red line for the U.S. and international community to strike Hamas? Uh, the Demona strike 
I think this is a, this is another thing that would have huge psychological impact, right? There would be, you know, frontline you know, headlines everywhere in the world about Demona struck, you know. But but the, but Demona is not the size of a postage stamp, right? You know, there's a there's a nuclear you know facility at Demona. You know, it's not exactly uh, a soft target. Uh, it's, you know, it's a hardened kind of, uh, it's not underground, but it's a hardened kind of facility. Hamas, I don't think, has the uh, the rocket capability to inflict any significant damage there that would lead to release of, of uh, nuclear, uh, you know, material and so on. The, but the notion of attacking a nuclear, you know, facility with rockets and, and and maybe raising the risks of some something like uh, like that happening. I think that you know that would get you know a, great, a lot of attention, but I, you know it's not something that's going to draw I think direct U.S. Uh, you know you know any kind of U.S. Um, you know direct involvement. No U.S. direct involvement. To test out to directed energy weapons, right? That's your directed energy weapon. See the detonation behind me. That's your typical bomb. You see it all over the world, dead children flying up there somewhere, blah, blah, blah. And then this thing right here, what is that? It's coming straight down from the heavens, and it doesn't throw up smoke. It doesn't leave a smoke plume coming down behind it. And look at, look at the molten lava. It's kicking up. This is overkill. So they're testing out directed energy weapons on the Palestinians. Remember, there were three children... One was a settler, one was a, a military guy, and the other that were allegedly kidnapped by Hamas, but they weren't. There's no proof of it. And in Israel, arrested 600 people, and they knew right away who killed those three people, and then they just incited everybody. They destroyed 1,100 houses looking for those children. They'd, like they never had someone kidnapped before? They never had anybody murdered in their country before? And then all of a sudden we see directed energy weapons. They needed a reason to kill those children themselves. Then they kidnapped a Palestinian child just to get everybody crazy. They poured gas down his throat, gas over him, set him on fire. And then it was on, right? And then Hamas, oh no, you know, they shouldn't have been elected. They, they, they didn't even dream they were going to get elected. They were trying to get a seat. And they end up being elected? And no one thinks that's weird or odd or bizarre? Or the fact that Israel is using a directed energy weapon against people with no bomb shelters, no weapons, no navy, no air force, no tanks, no nothing, no way to defend themselves. Isolated, pinned down inside 25 square uh, mi 25 miles by four to seven mile wide, little tiny itty bitty chunk of land, and you got five million of them in refugee camps. Five million in refugee camps. And Israel's like, nah, that's got nothing to do with it. They're okay. We got them there 63 years. They feel at home there. You don't hear them complaining because we keep them in the camps. They can't get a driver's license. They can't get a house. They can't get a piece of land. Their children can't get an education. They can't get a job. They have no title. They're nomads. Why well, Israel lives in absolute luxury, the wealthiest country on the planet, and their soldiers are all mass murdering crazies. They're literally insane. They're conscripted in. Speaking of insane, speaking of insane, let's go to our next one. And the next one is, this is talking about the five million Palestinian refugees. Talking about the victim conceding all the time while the aggressor is being protected by the international community to do what it's doing and nobody is even pointing a finger at Israel. All we hear in the press, it's unfortunately that the launching of rockets have created this problem. No, my friend, occupation is the essence of this conflict and occupation must end. It's a shame that 47 years, 5 million Palestinians are still living under occupation with humiliation while Israel is claiming to be democracy and clinging to the land and building illegal settlements. You're talking about... Right. 5 million. And everybody knows it. And Israel is pretending it's not true. So they can have just their little tiny fantasy world and everything is hunky-dory and the world loves us. Everybody loves us. Right? That's Israel's fantasy. 
Now, Israel controls America. So let me play um, about a minute and a half clip, I think it is, or less. And that might help you understand what's going on there, why America. Besides the fact that there's 7,500 lobbyists, besides the fact that there's 120,000 support network, and those 7,500 lobbyists only got to deal with around 500 Congress and senators. But anyway, here's a clip. Every candidate for Congress at that time had a pledge. They were given a pledge to, to sign. And I was uh, new on the scene. And uh, so the pledge had Jerusalem as the capital city, uh, the military superiority of Israel. American Congress people have to sign this pledge. Yes, you sign the pledge. If you don't sign the pledge, you don't get money. But this is what is done for 535 members of the United States Congress. 100 senators, 435 members of the House of Representatives have to now write a paragraph, which basically says the same thing. So it's not a pledge, but it's a paragraph, and you post it, and you know, there are these forums you have to go to at the synagogues or whatever, and then, you know, if you don't perform appropriately, then you don't get money to run your campaign. Every candidate for Congress at that time had a pledge. They were given a pledge. They were given a pledge to sign to Israel. I must have turned the audio off on that one. I got it back on. They were given a pledge to sign to Israel. And if they didn't sign it, they didn't get any money for their elections. And you need a lot of money, tens of millions to run an election. Picture above me is a directed energy weapon. The one alongside of me is a bomb. It's a big frigger. The one over there is a bomb. The one up in the corner is a bomb. The one over my head is a directed energy weapon. There's no debris. Nutty but molten lava going everywhere. It's coming down from the heavens. Maybe God done it, right? Yeah, there you go. Damn it, that's what it was. God done it for us. Woo! Finally, after 5,000 years of praying, came down and done something. That's pretty cool. Here's Benny. Here we go. We're off to the fun stuff. Well, we use whatever means are necessary to defend our people, uh, as would the United States or any other government faced with uh, such a predicament. Well, we use whatever means are necessary to defend our people, uh, as would the United States. We use any means to defend ourselves. That's a directed energy weapon. There's no land left. They lost all their land. See that little tiny speck right there? That's Gaza. Gaza used to be that whole, all that white. And what you're seeing alongside of me is not kicking up dirt. It's not kicking up dead bodies or cars. It's not tearing apart buildings, what's going on? And so Israel, that's a serious war crime. Now tonight, when I went looking for these pictures, it was kind of interesting, I've never had this, but I start getting redirect notice every time I go to Free Republic, it didn't want me there. I went over to Free Republic, and it was just, there was a few links down below, and that's where I got some of these pictures. But I was looking for pictures and I got over to, can't even read that now, mainstream media, no problem at all. That link opened up, over to another mainstream media, AOL, that opened up. Went over to the Israelis, that opened up. Try to get over to Vizos, uh, uh, uh. Now I've never seen that before when I'm searching. And you know me, that's what I do all day long. And then when I try to get over to uh, NR, NPR, couldn't get over there. Well, I can get over there, but I, I had to do something I've never done before. So I thought that was really odd. One of the ones that got to no problem was that one there. And then I got that graph to my over here, and then I put that picture above me alongside of it. But that's where they say Hamas's rockets are all coming from. So why are they blowing up the entire country, right? Why are they destroying the entire country? Look at the size of these explosions. Just consider that. Look at that one up there. That's a, that's a directed energy weapon. It's not like the other explosions, right? It's got nothing to do with the other. We've never ever seen a picture like that one over my head before. I, I know I keep coming back to that. Let's keep going. Extended Gaza truce for 24 hours. Now, that page 
was sitting on my la on my on my computer for a couple of hours. And I, I took the screen capture. I'm sorry, not that one. I suppose be the other one. I screwed up. It's just the way I am sometimes. It was backwards. So Hamas fires rockets on Israel, ending 12-hour truce. And the paragraphs are almost the exact same. The pictures are almost the exact same of the girl. I put the other pictures in alongside of me. And then the one up above me. But that one right here, that, that girl and the billing and the pieces behind it. Look at that one down there. It's the same thing. And the paragraphs have most of the same words as the paragraph up here. And so that, that showed up on Drudge. It was on my desktop. And that re AP refreshes. I had some company. And I opened it up, and that headline was there. Israel says it's extending it. They changed the headline of AP. Instead, so if I had to send that link out to anybody, they would have ended up with Israel says it's extending Gaza truce instead of Hamas fires rocket on Israel ending 12-hour lull. Because he made that up, see, and came up with the story. AP comes out, and then everybody regurgitates that. Everybody aggregates that onto their site with the bots. So they don't have to do nothing. They're hooked up to AP. AP comes out with a story. Everybody gets the same headline and the same picture. Same with writers. And so Fox, CNN, ABC, CBS, Walt Disney, Viacom, Fox, they all run, which is all the major media, they all run with it at the exact same time. I thought that was quite interesting. They changed the headline. Instead of putting out another headline, they changed it. So what was that all about? Here's another headline. Liberal MP, Democrat MP David Ward facing the tweet. He tweeted, the big question is, if I lived in at Gaza, would I fire a rocket? Probably, yeah. And the blowback has been non-stop and will follow him around till the day he falls down from the harassment. Here's a good one. How would Zionists run Israel? Okay? Oh, fuck off with your thing. You know what I mean? I don't want to hear any anti-Semitism today. Jews get enough shit all over the world. They get shit on all the time. No. Oh, and, and Jews are the indigenous people of that area. You're sick of the bullshit. And the Arabs don't even want those Palestinians. Otherwise, they'd let them um, matriculate into their country. Nobody wants them. Yes, whatever you call that. So Jews were the indigenous people of the country. Why is there 4.7 million classified as refugees? And how come there's no refugee Israelis? They weren't refugees. They could have stayed where they were. Just like every other country that has a war, you stay where you were or where you are after the war is over. You know, because they won. So they had the Americans, the British, half the friggin' planet. And now what did they do? They put the crazies in charge. And the crazies are literally everywhere to be seen. Israel is the fourth biggest weapons exporter on the planet. And Israeli minister vows a Palestinian holocaust. Now that's the uh, older headline, but sterilized the Dutch or the Palestinian people was a Dutch writer. Just vicious. And Gilad Sharon, son of former, says we need to flatten, he got, he got his wish, entire neighborhoods in Gaza. And here's another headline, how Israel helped spawn Hamas to overthrow Arafat and then use to demonize the Palestinians, the six million Palestinians, right? That's how it was done, see? That's all they are, they're just a useful tool. And an Israeli recent, Israeli rabbi says killing civilians in Gaza is okay. Right? Got to let them sleep at night. Now, here's Joan River coming up. And uh, hang on, one more headline. Israel professor, rape Palestinian sisters and mothers to stop terrorism. Terrorists. Israel is crazy. Do they think any of that? You rape and, you come and rape my loved ones? I'll fucking hate you till the day you die. I'll do everything I can to get my hands on you. I'll never stop. I'll never stop. I'll hate you forever. And that's what they do in Iraq and Afghanistan. Five million orphans. And so what you do is you come in, you raped everybody. You are raping 28,000 American soldiers are raping their own each year. There's 280,000 over a decade. How many are raping in Afghanistan and Iraq? We're there to the police. We're there to the boss. We're there to the freaks. Just like what Israel is doing. Here's Joan River. Here we go. So I don't want to hear anymore. Oh, we'll do a partial truce. The Palestinians, you cannot throw rockets and expect people not to defend themselves. What about the civilian casualty rate? Civilian, then don't, don't you dare put weapon stashes 
in, in, in private homes and then we say get out, of, of course we're going to do it. The response normally is... So I got no audio on that one. Hang on, I go and fix that because it's going to take a second. Yeah, I got no audio. I'll come back over to Joni. Where are people going to go, Joan? You crazy coot. Where are they going to go when everything is busted and burnt and they're using directed energy weapons on the people? There's no one there to hold them accountable, no one to rein them in, no one to. Just people there to, to incite them, like you and like Howard, right? Just to incite them and make them feel like it's okay to come out there and murder the people with directed energy weapons and bombs so big they take out neighborhoods. When Hamas doesn't even have a warhead and can't even take out a car. You can't even take out a car, right? But it's okay to, to bust that place up to flatten the entire country? What do you think is going to happen at some point here? Like the Israel's prophecy is a Bible. By the way, that's a directed energy weapon. Everything else around me is a bomb, right? But that one in the middle, that doesn't have any smoke. That doesn't have any debris. That's spewing molten lava. You don't have to be a genius to understand what I'm showing you, how how crystal clear that is. You can't deny that. And then to incite everybody, just incite, 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 right? It's okay to go out and rape them. It's okay to kill them. It's okay. It doesn't matter. They're not like you, right? You're tough. You're the best on the planet. And you got no one firing back at you. Just these stupid Khazad rockets towards Israel. But you're going in there. 35 you die. Most of you are probably killed by your own fire. By your own people, by your own jets, by your own drones, by your own tanks, by your own Black Hawk helicopters, by your 155 millimeter depleted uranium rounds that you fire in as if there's no consequences. Do you think that's not going to come back to Israel and poison your children, that depleted uranium materials? You best, you best think that it is. It's not okay to kill people that can't fight back. You're fighting Hamas, so why are you killing the 1.6 million Palestinian? Why are you destroying them? Why do you have 600 checkpoints? Why have you never... How is it that 10,000 people can hold everybody hostage? Which they don't got tanks. They don't got helicopters. You're worried about a bomb that can't even blow a window out of a truck. And then you have the Jew report. Matt Drudge inciting violence. That's all he does. Look, the, the, the car is what a Hamas rocket will do. Drudge, come here, online anti-Semitic runs rampant. Have you seen what Israelis are saying everywhere? Have you seen how crazy and they're demented, and how they fake everything, how they have thousands and thousands of victims every day from the settlers pounding on the Palestinian children who are afraid to lift their heads up, let alone pick up a rock? If they had weapons, you wouldn't do that. If they had weapons and tanks and a standing army and they weren't, you know, they weren't, uh, if they were, imagine if Palestinians was Israelis. If Palestinians was doing this to Israelis, I'd be here tonight screaming at the Palestinians. You got people in a 125 square mile, 125 square mile. Let me get a clip for you so you can really understand it. 125 square miles. That little tiny green at the top of Israel. See Israel right there, closest one to me. The eye in Israel. See that little green block of land? That's all they got left. See the last one over is all green? That's what they had. Israel took everything. All their water, all their gas, all their highways. Put up 600 checkpoints in 25 miles by 7 miles. It's so demented. It's so twisted. And then they scream about Iran. Where's Iran? Well, they got 49 bases on their border, American bases, full of military, I Israelis' weapons. And they're ready, to, they're ready to destroy Iran. Iran can't do nothing. Nobody can do nothing. It, Israel has destroyed everything sacred on the planet. 
And then they have this illusion that Iran is going to get out to attack people. What are they going to do? Dress up as a camel and sneak across the desert? 49 bases. So it's electronic warfare. Everything else going against these people. Sabotage, assassinations, mass murder. And they shouldn't hate you. They shouldn't reject you. They shouldn't despise you for what you're doing. What you've done to them. How you destroyed economically, air, land, sea, just like Gaza. That's what you got done to Gaza. No difference. Here's a good one today. Hamas in North Korea. How's Hamas ever going to get out of there? Huh? A little tiny chunk of land and Israel has it completely surrounded with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of checkpoints, with thousands of tanks, with jet fighters, with drones, with satellites, with Black Hawk helicopters, with the entire planet ready to go defend crazy, kooky, whack jobs who prophecy is the whole world will turn against Israel, God will come down and destroy the whole planet, and only the people in Israel will get into heaven. And if Israel gets their way, it'll only be Jews. Right, because they're ethnically cleansing Israel. But Iran wants war. 49 bases. Look how close they put their country to the American Israeli stock basements. Here's another headline for you. Israeli soldiers deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. For what? For fighting people with nothing? For using directed energy weapons and for using... Depleted uranium, dirty bombs. What you're seeing there on the ground, that's all dirty bombs. And they got all kinds of different colors there. And these bombs go in and they wreck the place beyond repair. You can't repair that. You can't even get the bodies back. And it's okay as long as no Israeli gets hurt. You're not hurting Israel people. You're hurting the Palestinians. Israel people are protected by all the mainstream media. No one's going to let anything happen to them, right? Here's another clip of Benjamin in Wahoo. Uh, Prime Minister, how long do you think this is going to go on? I mean, uh, I, I, I understand what you're saying here, but how will you know you've won? I think the issue is achieving the, the mission, uh, and we'll have to see how, um, how that is achieved. I was asked uh, by someone, is this the... Uh, the beginning of the end, and I said, I don't know if it's the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end. We've just received now a quiet alert. As we were giving this interview, can you hear this through the, uh, can you hear this? No? Uh, yes. Well, what you're hearing right now is the, uh, uh, that, that's the calm alert. In other words, when we began... So everybody can go high, come up and pee on the cars, right? And get up on the cars and throw rocks at the Palestinian children, because that's what they do. That's all they do. Everybody is mesmerized that a rocket is going to come out and hurt somebody. They, they barely make one there, and it can't even hurt a car, right? It can't even beat the windows out of a car. But here, look. Israel's are small nuclear detonations. These are tactical nuclear weapons that Israel is firing into these places. Have a look at it. These are nuclear weapons, folks. They're incinerating and annihilating everything there. This is not a kinetic. You don't need a kinetic. What the hell is it? You know, what could carry something that big? That's not a jet bomb that does something like that. That's a... Just look at it. That's inconceivable damage. That's unimaginable chaos. So let me go back to... let me Because we're winding down. And... I'm still got a little ways to get there yet. See, Palestinian, as a Palestinian, he's not a Hamas. He throws rocks. He's a child. The average age there is 15. You know why the average age in Gaza is 15? It's 25 mile by 4 to 7 square uh, wide mile, little tiny strip of land. Because it's 4.7 million. The adults and families and everybody else in refugee camps, there's no adults left. There's nothing left. Here comes another clip of, you guessed it, wild man. And as we begin this interview, Tel Aviv is again under an alert that the sirens have just gone off. Well, the sirens went off because uh, Hamas... Uh, I screwed up. Hang on. Played that one. Here we go. I like this one. Uh, 5,700 injured. Now he says, 
fired rockets on uh, Israel's major city. They're firing rockets at all our cities. Uh, I want I want your uh, uh, audience to imagine what uh, it would be like if all the cities of the United States. I'm not just talking about New York and Washington. I'm talking about all the cities of the United States, from the East Coast to Colorado. Eighty percent of your population would be uh, in bomb shelters uh, with a, a minute to a minute and a half red alert warning time to get into those shelters. That's what we're experiencing right now as we speak. So this is. How much time do they have? A minute and a half? They got no bomb shelters. I thought it would have done them any good. The concussion would kill you. You've wrecked the entire country for 63 years and you're fending all of this so you can test out directed energy weapons, test out your tunnel technology, test out your new latest, greatest mass murder weapons, and disproportional. It's something to me, anyway. Look, that's a directed energy weapon. I'm going to have to shut it down because it's something to me, anyway. This is directed energy weapon. Look at it. There's no smoke trails. There's no debris flying everywhere. There's molten lava ejecting out of it. See the one above me? There's another clip. Look at that. I get that. Darn, my eyes got me. I'm going to have to give it up can see. Such is life. Look, the bomb alongside of me, the bomb over there, the bomb up there, they're normal explosive kinetic energy bombs. The one above me, we've never seen it before. It's a war crime. It's a directed energy weapon. These are nuclear detonation, some of them. They're directed, they're, they're depleting uranium munitions on top of that 155 millimeter. Those tanks don't fire anything else. They don't fire anything else. That's what they fire is dirty bombs. That's it. Nothing else but dirty bombs. Guys have got no land left and now they're gonna spray it with directed energy weapons and some leftover artillery from the fourth biggest weapons producer on the planet. And I'm not saying what I'm doing, you know, come on, stop. I'm saying here's another narrative that you have to think about that the war got nothing to do with Hamas firing rockets, they can't hurt Israel. None of them can. They don't even got explosive tips. They can't even take the window out of a car. When Israel is taking out city blocks, one after another has destroyed everything in eastern Gaza. For what? For what? Do you think that's going to stop the 5 million orphans from wanting to come home? Do you think that's going to change that? That depleted directed energy weapon there. Look at it. That's your future. And they're testing it out right now on the most vulnerable people on the planet. Do you think for a second they'll hesitate to test it out on you or me or anybody else or your loved ones or your friends or your aunts or your uncles? You should give your head a shake. And when it falls off, give it a kick. Better yet, give it to the nuclearproctologist.org and I'll be glad to give it a drop in the ocean. That's it for me tonight, folks. Good night, Am Thirst. Mom's the word. Shanigan, 775, Stacy Hugs, Mickey, Smith, David Maurer, Kim Young. We'll catch you folks on the rebound. Have a nice night, everybody. I got my eyes driving me nuts. I got to give it up. Take care.